Hi everybody and welcome to today's tutorial. I'm going to be showing you how you can get better interior photography by using Lightroom 5 and Photoshop CS5. So I'm going to start with this hallway, uh, this landing, and First of all, obviously the first thing I would always do is look at my composition. So to me, as I look at that image, it's not straight. It's a little bit imploding as I like to call it. So if we go into the manual lens correction section, I just verticalize that and I'm gonna make a little crop. I'm gonna make a croppy right there and I'm gonna stretch it out by hitting the lens correction, the profile correction, there we go. And then I'm gonna tilt as needed so that's already looking a lot better um, everything looks vertical which is the main thing now the exposure looks pretty good to me there uh, there's a couple of things stick out to me straight away um, there's two light bulbs out so what I'm going to do the second half of this tutorial is going to be in Photoshop I'm going to show you how to clone those sorts of things show you how easy it really is and um, but for now I'm just going to make sure that I've got the rest of the photo right so just to see, um, show you what I do, I'm gonna get rid of the, the highlights, I'm gonna bump up those shadows just to bring in a little bit more detail, because there's not really anything in that that's, anything in the highlights that's particularly interesting, so let's get rid of those. And again, with the whites, if I just drop that down, I, I like to stay away from perfect white, to be honest, because I think it's a little bit, it gives you snow blindness if you look at it too long, so I like to just, dim my whites a little bit and increase the exposure afterwards and, and I like to dim the blacks as well okay so yeah I'm going to pick those up and to me that looks pretty good so what, what we've done nice and easy we've cropped it slightly and we've verticalized it and I'm going to remember to just clone in some bulbs there in a bit so last thing we'll do add a little bit of clarity hike up the vibrance hike down that situation and I'm going to sharpen all the way up to three quarters or maybe even more than that. What's that? Seven eighths. And that is a finished image. That's as easy as that. So we'll move on to the next one now, which is a master bedroom. Um, as usual, uh, but straight away, first of all, because that looks pretty straight to me. If you can see on the left hand side, there's a bit of a curvature there. But because that's almost a perfect curve, that suggests to me that my verticals are almost straight on. So I'm going to pull that um, out a little bit and I'm just going, to, just going to double check and see how I'm looking. It's always better to avoid straight lines at the edge of your frame because they will always, always sort of call you out. You, you, you'll always be able to see a mistake. So just always try and, you know, avoid that where you can. I'm I've just, um, because obviously on a lot of lenses, on a lot of cheaper lenses, you will get some vignetting. So I always um, compensate in the vignetting section down there, just to wake up the edges a little bit. And next I'm going to bring up those shadows, just see a bit of detail in the carpet, just to draw your eyes to the actual floor space, because that's very, very, very important with um, estate photography, is showing how much floor space is available. I'm going to get down, rid of those highlights so we can see the view, which is also, again, very important, what you'll be waking up to every morning if you buy this house for 280 grand. And I'm just going to pull those, the exposure up a little bit. Yeah, that's good. I'm going to drop down whites down, drop the blacks, put the exposure up just a tint. So we've gone up almost a stop there. So that is, uh, that to me looks like a nice image. I'm going to increase clarity vibrance and pull back on the saturation go up on my sharpening easy good that's another one down so that looks pretty good to me uh, next is a lounge now this is most commonly your second or third image in um, after your front shot so you need to make sure this looks pretty sexy now again we're going to start with the actual setup of that of this actual um, picture so let's first of all look at those those vertical verticalizers let's vertical right okay so I think 
in camera, I got this wrong a little bit. I think I was a little bit too skew with. Now, when you're lining up lines, always never use picture frames because they could be wrong, or candlesticks that could the spirit level could be wrong on the floor. You never know. Look at window uh, ledges, fireplaces. They're almost certainly vertical. So line up off that. Um, I'm talking about the actual chimney breast, not the the chimney that's come in. Um, for decoration. So that looks good to me. Now what have I done the profile correction I have? So I'm going to go with that. So I've I've compensated a little bit by cropping in, cropping it down a bit so it looks a little bit less wide than the original shot. But hey ho, that is the price we're going to have to pay when you don't get it right when you're there. So let's drop those highlights so you can see what you look what the what the vendor will be able to see when they look out the front window. And let's pull up those highlights just to get a bit of details around the sofa section and the TV. And there's flowers looking a little bit more alive now. Okay, good. So I'm dropping down the whites, again, just to take the glare off the ceiling. And I'll drop down the blacks, pick up the exposure. And I quite like that, I think that's quite nice so far. And let's get a bit more vibrance. That looks good. Now just to add a little bit of warmth, this was a summer picture. People, it's August. People are going to be thinking, "Oh, it's warm outside." You know, I don't want to give them a picture that looks like that. That looks cold. So I'm just going to go to town on the warmth a little bit. I'm just going to exaggerate that little bit of warmth. That looks good. I'm just going to do a couple of little touches here. I don't normally do this, but I'm just going to highlight the the light in this room. So anywhere the light hits the floor, I'm going to pull that back a bit. It looks a bit silly. That looks good. Um, I'm going to hit these bits of light here, that looks nice, yeah good, it's all about leading lines, what are you telling, the, you're telling a story to your whoever's looking at this picture, you want to show how light this room can be, I know fair enough we've got the actual lights on, but it looks nice I think when you've just added just a little bit of colour, uh, a little bit of sort of false exposure really, so that, that looks quite nice and there's only a little difference but that looks quite quite good I think. Yeah that looks good, um, I'm going to smooth over, I don't, again I don't normally do this but I'm just going to double click there so everything goes down to reset, I'm going to drop the clarity down to zero and I am going to click on the exposure button that I've done, this should show me what I've already done, so that if I'm just going to drop down the, drop down the clarity that will address that. So looking at that, see the difference in the armchair? I'm just going to drop down that. I think that looks pretty good. That looks pretty nice. Okay, now just one last brush. I'm going to draw this over the window. I'm going to drop the exposure slightly. Increase the clarity, so I'm just going to draw it over the window. Just so we can see outside a little bit. Now you'll almost certainly not be able to get a correctly exposed interior and the outdoors as well so if you really really want to go all out you can photoshop in a blue sky outside if you like and I do use I do use um, flash I think you have to use flash in the 21st century to market your properties otherwise your photos just look crap okay so that's done that is a nice nicely done lounge I think and then finally this is the most tricky one so this is the outside now what I did obviously I, I took a little step back I looked at the property and thought this, you could build another house on that drive. It's, there's a lot of land. So, first of all, we've got to get this image straight, which helps because we've got a car in shot. So I'm just going to pull that in a little bit until it's not too far out the frame. Good, I could probably go in a little bit more. And we're still... Still, we've still got plenty of land on the right hand side, so let's not lose anything off the left hand side. Good, that looks nice, yep, yeah, excellent. So, next thing we're going to do is we're just going to drop the shadows and watch what happens to the sky. No, <laughs> I meant the highlights. Wrong button, that's embarrassing. If I just double click that, it goes down to naught. Look at the sky, it looks immediately sexier, and I'll just pick up the highlights. That's going to give you a bit of a HDR look but nothing too vomit worthy because I really don't like HDR. I used to love it when I first started out as a photographer, but once you get really into it, you realize just how cheap it is. Um, 
I'm going to pick up the vibrance. Um, think about your front shot. When you're house hunting yourself, you see a photo. If you see a sexy photo of a sexy house, you're going to open that, that link. You're going to want to click on it. So just think about that. Don't go too sickeningly over the top with your, with your saturation. Just be clever with it. And see, this is where we were. And this is where we're going to go. So I'm just going to pick up the vibrance with that blue sky. Oh, what a sunny day. Imagine living there, how sunny it is and how lovely it is. In reality, this is Northfield. Anyone who knows Northfield probably knows what a real Northfield day is like. And don't always look like that when I'm not on about the sky. Um, so that looks pretty good to me. Now, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to enhance sharpening. Look at the brickwork. Bing! That looks really, really good. And we'll pick up that clarity even more because we're outdoors. So I want to get the, the texture of the roof and the brickwork, which I'm really, really interested in. Because if someone can see how well made that house is, they're going to want to buy it. Your estate agent is going to want to pay you for it. Also, the main thing about this photo is we're really, really boasting the amount of drive space that they've got. Look at all that room. In fact, I'm going to draw a brush just to show how sexy that driveway is. Okay, lovely. So that looks really, really, that's a really strong image, I think. Now in Photoshop, I'm going to clone up. In fact, no, I could do that here, probably. Let me just see if I can get rid of this little front of this car. All right, that's a really cool image. And overall, I'm going to just enhance that clarity a bit more. I'm going to really go to town on it and make it really, really, really stand out. Now to me, that is a really winning image of a property. If we enhance the clarity a little bit at the contrast, it starts to look a bit silly. Um, so I'll pull, pull back on that. In fact, I'm going to bring those shadows down a bit because the shadows I'm going to pull the highlights back, sorry, just slightly. Yeah, that looks good. That looks, that looks like a real nice image to me. So we're, uh, we're winning. And because I shot this on my uh, 1835 Sigma, don't need to do that much, oops, that much correction to the actual image, which actually doesn't make that much difference, but we will anyway. So that is a front elevation. Okay, so now I'm just going to... Um, Put this landing into Photoshop and I'll see you in a second. It's going to take me a minute just to boot up. So catch you in a minute. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Well, I say welcome back. You probably haven't been anywhere. I, however, have. I have just opened Photoshop CS5 and I've just imported my image landing that I've just exported from Lightroom. Now, this file is not particularly full of pixels because I've only resized it at 1500 square because Every file you need to, uh, uh, well, I particularly use for this particular estate agent, they don't want huge files because they've got so many photos, it would just crash their system. So I have to limit myself pixel-wise. So what I've done, I am not editing a raw file here, I'm editing the JPEG, as I said, so that's why the pixels don't look particularly stunning. Now, what we want to do, I want to just clone one of these light bulbs twice to put on these light bulbs that have gone out. Now it's quite a common thing that people will ask you to do. So how do you do it? Well, the fourth the fourth tool down here is the magic wand tool. So choose a bulb that you want to clone. I'm going to close this one, and the magic wand tool will probably just just clone one for you. Um, it will choose it for you. Sorry, and based on the shape that you've clicked on. Now what we want to do is we want to press Command and Copy. Command and C, sorry, which is copy, and press Command V, which is paste, do that twice. And we're going to create two different layers. Now, if we hit the eyeball off the background, we can see that we've created two layers, two separate light bulbs. So let's move these. Let's go back to the move tool. Let's move these around just so we know where they are. Okay, so let's get the background on and let's get our layer. Let's dim our layer one out. So first of all, let's just move. Let's just move our troublesome. How do I move that? Hang on. Let's just move our troublesome light bulb. So let's just stick it on there, and voila, that's the first one done. Now that is in. So that is layer two. That's done. 
Now layer one, let's move that one. Now it's a whole different ball game to show you how to layer underneath that lampshade. But for this uh, particular occasion, we'll be able to easily get away with that because it's looking at it from a distance that does not look out of place. Now I'm obviously gonna resize that. So what I need to do, I need to press Command and T and that, then I can really play with the dimensions of that ball to make it look a little bit further away than perhaps it looked. So I can, and if I press Command, I can warp the dimensions of it to make it look how I want it to look. So then I can just move that until I feel like it's, it looks pretty good, and I think that does. So let me just zoom out, and there we go. We've got a, a, a landing full of light now. Okay, so that completes the tutorial, so thanks very much, everybody. Okay, everybody, that's it. It's as simple as that. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. Please like, comment, subscribe, share, and I'd be very, very grateful. But until the next video, thank you. Ta-da!